Doug Higgins for SoberRun.com. I'm standing here this afternoon with Karen Casey. Karen, in a nutshell, what's your message? My main message is to everybody, to what we learn in the rooms of the fellowship. Let's try to take that message to the people we meet on the street, wherever they are, because we're learning a message of hope, we're learning a message of peace, we're learning a message of love. And I really think that we have been selected to spread that message far and wide. That's what my writing has been about, that's what my speaking is about, that's what the workshops are about that I do. I want to help people realize that we truly can make a difference in the lives of everybody we pass, no matter if we're passing them in the rooms of recovery or if we're passing them at the bank that we have our money in. It's all about who we are, how we show up, what we give to one another in each moment of time. It's passing the hand of peace to everybody else. Karen, thanks for taking the time. Oh, you're welcome. Wow. Hi, everybody. My name is Karen, and I'm an alcoholic. And um, I want to give you <clears throat> a bit about how I ended up here today. Well, I, I ended up here today because Bill Fritz invited me to come here today. And isn't he just like one of the best friends you ever had? Yeah. He, he invited me to this very first event, I believe it was four years ago, when they were teamed up with Hazeldon up in uh, Oregon. And um, so I was so happy when he called and said, will you come again? And I said, absolutely. Any, any way to help you out is a way to help my program too. So I am so glad to be here. And, and so far, um, it's been a fabulous day. I, I absolutely had never heard the young woman who spoke before me. What, uh, her name again, I don't want to say it wrong, Christina. Wow, what a story that woman had. What a story. Um, we all have similar stories in some respects, and I, I was struck with her sharing that she had taken her first drink at age 13. And that's where my uh, journey began, too, on this road to ending up in Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, I took my first drink at age 13, and, and I looked at her and I thought, gosh, you know, maybe um, had I stopped sooner, I would look pretty and stand up here with long blonde hair, too. <laughs> I didn't stop as soon as she did. But, um, but I guess uh, celebrate, I celebrated 36 years of recovery, May 24th. And, and that really is an amazing thing when I think about it, that, that I too have been sober for half of my life now. I just have a longer life that I have been sober half of for. Um, but I grew up in, in Indiana, Lafayette, Indiana, and I was the third kid in a family of four children. And, um, and it wasn't really an alcoholic family, but my dad was a rageaholic. And so it felt like an alcoholic family because you never knew what was going to happen next. You always expected the worst. And, and after I finally got into AA, I actually looked back on that and I, I thought, you know, perhaps he really was alcoholic, but he was so damned determined not to end up the way my life ended up that he controlled it to the point of never really letting him finally enjoy the fruits of what we all enjoy in Alcoholics Anonymous. I really wish that had happened for him, but instead he just was rage, raging all of the time. And so when I was a, a child, um, I always felt like it was my job in the family to try to take care of my mother and my younger brother because they always seemed to get the brunt of his anger. And, um, and it, was a really, it was a really sad thing to watch because he came home from work night after night, angry even after he took that first drink, and always somebody was on the 
rough end of the stick he used. And, and it was a, not, a, not a happy situation to grow up in. And so I really felt as though if I could save my mom and my young brother from some of his anger, that I would have provided something wonderful for my family. And I had two older sisters, and for some reason, they never ever seemed to get the brunt of anything. They kind of slid under the radar screen, and I never quite knew how that happened. But you know, when we talk about what it was like growing up in that family, it's as though we grew up in a, a not the same family. You know, my experiences, my observations, my recollections of that family are nothing like what they remember. And I don't know if, if my recollections are colored by the fact that then I became alcoholic or not, but, um, but what I saw in that family was a great deal of sadness, a great deal of depression, a great deal of, of anguish. And so turning to alcohol at the age of 13, for me, was an, an obvious solution. 